I get a lot of questions about what are some of the good strategies for teachers to help guide students for doing multiple characters, whether they're by themselves or um, in a group where they're trying to take on a lot of different roles. I mean, is it voice change? Is it outfit change? What are some good? Several different techniques, several different techniques. If you want to have one person portraying more than one character, they have to change voice. They have to change physical presence. Um, actually kind of change what they call the plane, where you're having the two opposed figures going back and forth. Um, but there you still have to go with the physical and the vocal change. Um, costume change, it's not all that important as long as you have that definite step between character and character. Uh, more than one character on stage at a time, uh, it's really depth of field or depth of vision similar to what John was talking about. If, come on up here for a minute, Megan. <laughs> and this is part of the blocking stage, stand over there. <laughs> All right, when two people are, are interacting normally, they're looking straight at each other. But when you're talking about performances, you have different depths so that the stage has that view that it's not all on the same line. The eye gives a little trick. So when Megan and I were talking, we wouldn't look right towards each other. Megan would look this way, I would look that way, where the audience thinks that we're looking at each other. The idea is to keep yourself open to the audience, where if that depth, and I'm turning back, again, that's called upstaging. That's what that term means. And it just means that the character's moving away. Especially if that character's got the most of the, uh, the dialogue or most of the action, you want the audience to be able to see that. You want the judges to see that. Um, okay, go ahead, thank you. And, and, and that's, that's that depth thing. That's the thing where when you have more than one character on stage. Uh, more nitnoid technical theater stuff, when you have one character talking, the other character standing there, a lot of times they don't just stand there. You don't just stand there when you're having a conversation with someone. Sometimes you're doing some things with your hands, what they call busy work within the theater. Um, my greatest advice for you, those of you that have a drama department at your school, have your kids work with the drama teacher. Have them give them some tips on presentation. Uh, a lot of times I lean up, because I'm a little hard of hearing, and so I have a little difficulty when the kids start talking like this. All day long, you hear these kids yelling and screaming. Put them in front of an adult, and I can't hear you. And I'll start leaning, start leaning, and then I'll miss, I may miss the important part of what your message, the important part of the message to try to get across. If I can't hear it, I can't mark you on it. So there it goes the projection. Bring it up louder, bring it up louder, breathe from the diaphragm, a uh, little different. And your drama teacher can get you some of the little tips on little rhymes for diction and things like that. 